Artificial intelligence, AI. A commonly accepted definition of this technology is teaching computers to do what we once thought only we could do. Sounds pretty cool, right? It sounded insane to 14-year-old me. I'd begun tinkering with the technology a few months prior, trying to develop a facial recognition system for my room. I had no idea back then that just trying to get my brother to not steal my DS from my room would lead me to MIT Launch, an entrepreneurship program hosted at the technological capital of the world. At the end of the program, I presented my demo. I developed an app that was meant to allow blind users to identify objects, read text, and otherwise navigate their environment all through AI. The presentation was going fine, up until when my teammate asked, the vol asked a volunteer from the audience to throw something down to test the app in real time. He was confident in my algorithm, even though I wasn't. A stuffed animal flew over the seats and landed right in front of us. He stamped a picture, and the algorithm responded, a stuffed animal on a tiled floor. As the audience started to applaud, I started to realize the true power of this technology. After that presentation, I was approached by social media companies, agricultural societies, and others, asking for advice about how to implement AI into their organizations. I've spent the last three years working on this technology. I've partnered with companies and organizations to help them utilize AI for their specific needs. So when kids in my school hear that I work with AI, the first thing that pops into their heads are, you know, silvery humanoids with the glowing red eyes, like the ones you see on the screen. They apparently have a single goal to eliminate us. When will they get rid of us, they ask. So yeah, that response is a bit overdramatic and it's far from the current truth. So what is the current state of AI? Is it like the movie super intelligence or is it like the ones we play video games against? Well, there are a few technicalities, but it's actually somewhere in between. There are three types of AI. Narrow AI, which is what we have right now, which is good at a few specific tasks. Then we have general AI, which is when AI becomes as smart as we are. And then finally, we have super intelligent AI, which is when AI becomes even smarter than we are. The current narrow AI we, ha narrow AI we have is simply an algorithm that can learn to get better at a single specific task, depending on the data that, it's a that it was given to learn from. This type of AI is used to you know, figure out what you want on Amazon, tag pictures of your friends on Facebook, and get you, quick ride on, get, get you quick rides on Uber. Again, don't think superhuman intelligence. It's actually more like my little brother. <laughs> In reality, the reason is because they both are good at a few specific things, but ask them to do anything else, and they've absolutely no idea what to do. Altogether, while they're doing this, they provide no reasoning for what they're doing. AI isn't a dream in the distant future. No, it's something that's happening all around us right now. It's a new industrial revolution, and with the onset of every new technology, there's always needed to be new laws, new regulations, to limit the technology from ballooning out of control before we fully understand its effects. When cars were invented, the entire of human experience changed and new laws had to be created to govern them. We've all come to understand how important it is that our data is kept private, that our personal information isn't exploited, that our rights are not being violated. The legal and illegal aspects of what this technology is capable of will be defined soon. Will be defined soon and it will actually revolutionize future human history. It will forever change how we not only interact with technology, but how we live our lives. It's our generation, you guys right now, that'll, that'll be the judge of what this technology will be, would, that you guys are the judge of what this technology should be allowed to do and not do. All I'm gonna do is give you some insights into how this technology is currently being used and more importantly misused so you can learn to identify for yourself whether AI is being used legally and ethically. Let's hop right in. Lesson one. AI in business. Uber, you know, the app that you use to get rides. Uber is a technology enabled convenience. And convenience is the commodity of our generation. It's the basis of many of our economic decisions. It's because of Uber's convenience that they've taken over the taxi industry. But the question is, what else have they taken over? 
There are around a million active Uber drivers in the U.S. and Canada combined. These drivers are a different type of employee, though. They're not like most. They're working for an algorithm. They're working for a company that oversees the work, the productivity, and the compensation of its employees, not with an actual human boss, but by an AI algorithm. The supervisor is an algorithm executing the business strategies and workflows designed by corporate leaders. But there is no direct interaction between the employees and the corporate supervisors. According to Uber themselves, they collect and analyze all the details about the ride, like the ride acceptance rates, cancellation rates, hours spent logged onto the app, and the trips completed. They even use GPS, accelerometer, and gyroscope values to analyze the ride. Uber has given us our first glance into the future. In this case, it's a future where your boss isn't even human. This isn't even science fiction. This is happening right now. With this new form of algorithmic supervision, it's not clear to drivers about how exactly they'll get paid. According to the Office for Federal Contract Compliance Programs, when people's finances are on the line, they have a right to know exactly what they're getting paid and why. Executive Order 112 246 protects employees from discrimination or harassment when, when attempting to better understand their economic compensation. There has been some question of whether Uber drivers are in fact employees, but as stated on the Cornell Law School's legal information website, both state and federal courts have ruled that they are employees because they're essential to Uber's business. AI is not, only affecting is not only affecting employees, it's also infecting consumers. According to a Bloomberg News article by Eric Newcomer, it was revealed that Uber has been using an algorithm called Firehouse to predict how much someone was willing to pay for a ride and then change the fare accordingly, rather than using standard rates for everyone. While this would be classified as price discrimination, Uber simply claimed it was a clever use of AI. Price discrimination in terms of consumers was discuss discussed by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and, De and Development, or the OECD, an intergovernmental organization consisting of 36 countries, including the U.S. Their, their roundtable on price discrimination said that algorithms are equal, are to, are equal to su the subject of an equal amount of scrutiny to, as compared to normal companies. They recognize the lax regulations, stating the scope for price discrimination in the digital economy is expanding as firms increase the accuracy with which they can predict an individual's willingness to pay. This raises the stakes on exploitative price discrimination, and there are reasons to worry that price discrimination in digital markets will be harmful. Markets may resolve the problem themselves, or with a little help, for example, mandating transparency on the use of personalized pricing or providing, providing greater clarity on the allocation of property rights to data. This is a good start, but it's not enough. Again, the algorithm is not a demon here. It's a tool, one that, like every other, is only as good as the person using it. The Uber case is one clear way to see and understand exactly how AI is being used in business and how exactly it's creating revolution. The first thing I'm encouraging is to learn the basics so we can make educated decisions about the laws governing use of AI in business. These laws need to foremost ensure of one thing, transparency. You guys can encourage lawmakers to do this. You can make sure you know what you're talking about by looking to the process that companies are, in this case, using to both pay their employees as well as how they charge their consumers. We must hold the companies using artificial intelligence responsible, just like you could hold any other re company responsible for the treatment of their employees. It may be inevitable that AI bosses will soon manage millions of people, but with the rights and livelihoods of that many at stake, it's important that we establish laws to protect them. When the use or misuse of algorithms to control markets is known, as in the case of Uber, we must find ways to regulate them. When technology gets ahead of regulations, that's when things go wrong. Let's hop into lesson two, AI in the justice system. An important factor behind the rise of AI is the immense amount of data that has become accessible through the internet as a source. AI algorithms determine patterns in data, which can then be used to make predictions. For example, many AI algorithms are currently being used in the justice system as a method to identify the risk of an individual to skip court, commit, on, commit another crime, or even a more serious one. 
These algorithms are used as a method of risk assessment that help determine outcomes for defendants at every stage in the criminal justice process, from setting bail to sentencing. As reported in an article by investigative journalists Julie Angwin, Jeff Larson, Soria Matu, and Lauren Kirchner in the May 2016 ProPublica, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder warned that the risk scores may be injecting bias into the courts. Although he, um, although he understands these measures were crafted with the best of intentions, he was concerned that they inadvertently undermine our efforts to ensure individualized and equal justice. The ProPublica Pro team launched their own study of the risk assessment predictions made by the algorithm. And I quote, they found significant racial disparities as Holder feared. In forecasting who was likely to reoffend, the formula, formula was particularly likely to falsely flag black defendants as future criminals, wrongly labeling them this way at almost twice the rate as white defendants. White defendants were mislabeled low risk more often than black defendants, regardless of other factors. Now I recognize that our criminal justice system is extremely complicated. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to delve any deeper here. I use this example to shine a, a light on the serious need for us as a society to understand that information is being processed by AI algorithms and the results of that information is being used in complicated, sometimes life-altering situations. We need to understand this technology so we can participate in the conversation with our lawmakers about regulating its usage. By demanding that governmental organizations can make, use, make the use of such algorithms public, it allows us to identify potential issues that may, result as a, as a, of, that may result from their use. AI is being used in almost every aspect of our lives, and its use is fairly invisible to most of us. But if you do believe that AI is being used unethically, do some research, inform representatives, and educate others about the unintended and intended uses of this technology. Many organizations may be looking in the short term to maximize their, their success with AI, but their idea of success might not alern, align with society's view of how the future should be. It is now up to us to look at both sides of the equation, to see the arguments analytically and play an active role in legislative decisions, helping lawmakers put safeguards into, in, put safeguards into place now so that the malevolent use technology, whether intentional or not, doesn't get too far out of control. It's important to take part in the discussion now because the technological revolution is happening and it will change how we use technology. You have the power to change the course of human history forever. I'm asking you to go now, make change, and be a responsible member of the AI revolution. Thank you.